It's now time for the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. And as ever, you can submit your questions down in the comments section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible in the allotted time. Right, straight to it. Question number one is from Beckham894. Hi, tech team. I need a little help to set up tubeless tyres on my new gravel bike. Um, I have completely the same setup for both front and rear wheels, tubeless ready tyres, Victoria tyre liner, tubeless valve, tubeless sealant, all identical to each other, all brand new, only the front wheel keeps slowly leaking. Um, it takes around one and a half to two days to go from 50 psi to zero, which is actually quite high for gravel bike tyres, 50 psi. Um, anyway, the rear wheel's got no leak. I've tried changing the rim tape, the front wheel, um, but it still keeps leaking. I'm frustrated. Any advice? Well, yes. David, <clears throat> we do have advice. Yes. Shall I go or do you want to go you first? Go, yeah. um, I had a very similar problem the other day where I was like, I just don't know where my tyres are leaking from. Turns out, I just hadn't quite put enough sealant inside it. Mm. That's what happens when I was guessing how much I was putting in there. I think this is giving me an idea. We should do a video that is like tubeless tyre troubleshooting. Fantastic. We should do that. Let's we? make it. Um, if you're really, look, if, if the tyre's going down, the air is leaking from somewhere, it, it's scientifically impossible otherwise to go yeah. down. Um, the easiest thing to do is to get a, a soapy water solution um, you can spray it or put it in, onto the tyre, all of the different areas, and it should bubble up where it's leaking from. Yeah, um, yeah. and definitely an area to look at is the valve area. That yeah. is a lot <clears> of the time the culprit. Um, your tubeless valve might not be tight enough, it might not be installed properly, um, it might have like lifted up and moved a bit on the outside, and you need to make sure that it's got that little rubber seal that goes on. That mm -hmm. is like a crucial little bit. It's like a little rubber O-ring that goes on before you uh, Put, put the, the little lock tightener yeah. lock, lock, peak, lock ring on. So, <clears throat> yeah, make sure that's all in place. Yeah. And the other thing is sometimes it can be like a damaged rim as yeah. well. Like, I mean, there's lots of things. Or if you've got rim tape, it can be a gap in the rim tape um, or a little hole in the rim tape. Sometimes where you've put a tire lever in, it can pierce the rim tape if you're unlucky. So I check all those things. It's a pain when this happens. It's a pain, pain um, in the A. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Okay, next question is from Jane65. Can I gain anything from degreasing and cleaning a used but far from worn out chain and change it to hot melt wax? Is there any gain? Also, we we'll I need to deep, deep clean the cassette chains and derailleur too. Best regards. Um, I would say don't deep clean and, and, and hot melt wax a, a, a used chain. Okay. Like I just think it's not worth the. It's a lot of hassle, effort. isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's, it's it's procedurally it's better to just start from afresh with a, a brand new chain, and when you get it before you ride it, take off the factory grease, mm -hmm. and then hot melt wax it, and that <clears> is <throat> where you will then see the benefit of the the longer chain, the yeah. better efficiency and stuff. Because, the, well, the longer chain life. Um, yeah. It, it's. It, yeah, it's... Um... It can be done, but I think your advice is that it's maybe not the best practice. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question have we got? Uh, it's from Forza1860 Muck, who says, I still don't get why a waxed chain lasts longer. For cassettes and chain rings, I get it, but the wear on the chain um, is indicated by it being too long. I always thought that this is caused by the power put into the chain. In my understanding, this stays the same even if you apply wax. Could you please clarify this? Oh, this is a misconception. Yeah. Chains yeah. don't get longer. Like the, it doesn't stretch. The different difference between the pins changes because the parts are wearing more. Yeah. So what you've got is like, let me see if I can. Okay, I'm gonna have to use. We're gonna improvise. I'm gonna have to use my fingers. And a, and a warning: this may trigger some people. So you've got the roller here, right? Arm concerned already. Like the chain, the chain links, and there's a hole. Yeah. And the pin goes through. Correct. Okay? Yeah. Now when the chain is new. These things are moving against each other, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay? And because they're moving against each other, when you have a normal lubricant in there, they yeah. attract much more dirt, they're much more sticky, they get a lot more dirt in there. And the dirt that goes in there is that grinding paste we talk about, <laughs> yeah. and that wears away the two surfaces that are in contact. Yeah. So that you end up with a chain that's like, the hole is like that for the sake of argument, and then it's like that, okay? Yeah. That's the pin. Mm -hmm. So now there's a bit of room in there, yeah? Yep. So keep a straight face, Alex. Grow up. So now you've got a bit of room in there. If that's across every single link in the chain, when you pull the chain tight, 
it's a bit longer because it yeah. has that play in it. You're, you're creating play inside the chain yeah. on a tiny, tiny level, but enough to make it that bit longer and not as good. Yeah. And, and it is. It's, it's the difference is, is that the wax-based lubricants reduce um, the wear. They don't attract as much dirt on the inside of the chain, which is what stops the wear. <clears throat> okay. Glad we cleared that up. Good. Kieran Bryant 737 says, I'm replacing my tyre shortly, but I'm confused as to what size to purchase. Um, it has a 26 millimeter wide rim, and using the rule of um, rim width should be 105% of the tyre for aero, so I should be getting 25 mils. But um, he's always hearing that the rolling resistance is much better on 28 mil tyres. Not really sure what to go for. The wheels are 30 millimetres deep aero boys. Okay, so I would say for your events where you or rides where you want to perform at your <coughs> best, yeah. I would have a work out what your average speed is going to be. If your average speed is going to be above 35k an hour, go for 25s or 26s. If your average speed is going to be below that, um, 28s are going to be faster overall. And this is through uh, research that was done by Swiss side yeah. years ago. There's always kind of going to be that slight trade off of like aero, rolling resistance, comfort, those sort of things. And you've got to sort of try and factor in the equipment that you're using to what your priorities yeah, are. Yeah, so like when I, yeah. when I do time trials at the going fast, four, 45, 50 odd K an hour, yeah. the aero width of the tyre actually becomes. A thing. Yeah. So at that point, you do want a 25. Or and a you're not bothered about comfort on the short time trial, are you? You're not going, oh, no. I want to be comfortable. No. I just want to go fast. Yeah. All right. Next question, who we got? Uh, is from Shikari. Shikari. Who says, Hi, GCN. I want to thank you guys for the content. Um, watching these videos during lockdown is what got me excited about road Ooh. biking and into the sport. Great to hear. Hell yeah. Uh, you make it fun and accessible for everyone. Question. I reattached my chain after waxing and realized I looped the chain on the wrong side of the guard <laughs> thingy uh, between the two jockey wheels. Ah, yeah, yeah. classic mistake. Um, it had been like that for about 50 kilometers. Didn't realize because I was zwifting with music on. When I realized it was immediately, I immediately re-waxed the chain, everything shifts and sounds fine like new. It sounded like um, a mild roar. Wondering if I've done any damage of a Canyon Ultimate. Um, I don't think you will have done damage. No, it would maybe have scuffed it all up. Might a have bit. like scuffed the the rear mech a little bit, like on that little pin. But yeah, you probably. Good thing is, Ultegra 11 speed has um, metal um, derailleur cage. If it's Durace, it uses like carbon fiber, maybe easier to damage. Yeah, locked um, in having Ultegra. But yeah, a lesson to you all: just make sure that when you do thread your chain through the rear mech, you get it, it through that properly. little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Scruffy Git 771. Um, didn't know I'd submitted any questions. <laughs> says, Hi, question for you. How is it that a carbon seat post does not require an internal expandable bung, as in the same as a headset carbon steerer, to prevent fra fracture through either tightening of the pinch bolts or the stresses caused by leverage of the saddle, especially is the, as there is a large percentage of the rider's weight on this post? Um, I've got a couple of points on this actually, mm. so, so shall I just go with this? So cast your minds back to a time before carbon fibre everything existed. The bung that is in the steerer, <coughs> excuse me, is to allow you to preload the bearing, head, the headset bearings, to put a little bit of force on them so there's no play. That's the main function of it. As carbon fibre steerers have evolved into it, then the bung has changed ever so slightly, so now it also provides an element of additional strength at the, at the steerer tube. It's not there just to provide additional strength, because without it, well, your headset would be loose. And there are other designs of headset out there which don't use that same system. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the seat post, it doesn't have to have that little bit of preload put on it. You're simply making it strong enough to deal with the clamping force and the leverage that's put on it, so it doesn't need a bung. And yeah. there's tons of different shaped seat posts, so you'd have tons of different sizes of bungs. Yeah, and often you find that the seat post is, the layup of the seat post will be designed for clamping yeah. right in that area so they can make it stronger yeah. um, and perform better as well. Uh, last question this week is from Jani724 who says, Hey everyone, I recently broke the barrel <coughs> adjuster on my Ultegra R8000 rear derailleur. Is it possible to add an inline barrel adjuster instead of buying another derailleur? Thanks. Um, yeah, well, you can have an inline barrel adjuster, but I feel like that's more of a hack sort of bodge fix rather than a proper one. The easiest thing to do would be 
um, try and get a second-hand derailleur, remove the barrel adjuster from it, or go to your local bike shop, because they quite often have these sort of parts lying around. And then you need to carefully remove the snaps bit from your existing derailleur, and then you can put the new barrel adjuster in, and everything will work tickety-boo how it was in the first place. Yeah, I think that's good, good advice. It's better to do like the proper fix than a makeshift one. Yeah. Okay, right, if we haven't answered your question, as always, sorry, but keep submitting it in the comment section down below, and um, we'll try and get to it in coming weeks. See you later. Bye.